Uh, so this week, uh, I like to make this kind of a special topic in GIS, this idea of remote sensing, uh, because um, uh, it's not an area that I found students generally have a lot of experience with or even really know about, even though it could be very important uh, in a lot of the work that you're doing, as, well, to, uh, in a lot of different work that people are doing, but especially I know that a lot of people uh, in this class are in the environmental science uh, and policy major or have a lot of interest in working with the environment. And it happens to be that remote sensing technologies, remote sensing methodologies uh, are exceptional for the study of the environment. Uh, and there's a lot of work that is done in this way. So what are we talking about in a general sense when we talk about remote sensing? Well, predominantly we're talking about satellite imagery. If you go to a conference, uh, and uh, geography and you have a remote sensing section, they're probably going to be talking about uh, using satellite imagery to collect data to perform some kind of analysis. And really, satellite imagery, remote sensing, and GIS, as we've been doing GIS, really go, uh, go very well together. There's a lot of uh, interaction between the two. And if you're sort of a GIS specialist, there is uh, a lot of benefit to at least knowing what goes on in remote sensing, what kind of data can be collected with remote sensing, uh, and what you could be doing with it with satellites uh, if you uh, wanted to. Uh, we tend to be rather more familiar with satellite imagery today than we have been in the past because you know we go to Google Maps and we talked about you know interacting when you're talking about geocoding and network analysis. Those are geo. Uh, GIS functions that we're very familiar with now because we go to Google Maps and we have access to those immediately. But then, you know, also we go over to the, the top corner and say switch to satellite and then it puts up not a map of the area but a satellite image of the area and you can go find your house or, you know, whatever and maybe do a hybrid overlay of the two. So we do encounter satellite imagery rather often in general society today. Uh, but rem A, remote sensing is actually far more broad than that. We're not just talking about satellites when we talk about remote sensing. But also, um, you know, when you look at a satellite image on Google Maps, it basically looks like a photo. You know, we can, and there is actually a tremendous amount of stuff that we can do with just a photo like that. But if you're actually going to be a remote sensing specialist, if you're going to go and talk about um, or study remote sensing in, uh, as, as a specialty, you do far more than just look at a picture of things. There's a, the different things that we're going to get into here. How do you use computers to analyze digital imagery and satellite imagery? Uh, and so there's a whole lot more than just looking at it. In fact, the remote sensing specialists that I know, one of my good friends when I was at the University of Buffalo doing a PhD, she's a remote sensing specialist, and uh, she basically never looks at an image like Google Maps puts up um, that's far more sophisticated than that. And so even though I'm touching on remote sensing in here, uh, because uh, I think it's an important thing that you need to know about a field that exists, there is so much to learn about remote sensing. It is a huge subspecialty. Uh, we have a remote sensing specialist in our geography department. His name is uh, Professor Jonathan Greenberg, and he teaches uh, a few classes. I mean, he teaches an introduction to remote sensing class, which is all satellite imagery, and then he does an advanced uh, remote sensing class as well. So if this very brief introduction over this lecture and the next lecture interests you uh, in remote sensing, well, there is I mean, tons of stuff that you can go and get into. So um, let's see here. We are talking about remote sensing. And I'd like to start with remote sensing in the broadest way we can talk about it. OK, remote sensing is satellite imagery, but it can also be much more. In the broadest possible sense, when you talk about remote sensing, you're talking about the ability to capture some data, some information about something, without having to be in contact with it. Now, we've got all kinds of sensor systems. Think about maybe a thermometer, you know, that you can measure the temperature of something if you come in contact with it, drop a thermometer inside uh, some liquid or against this table or something like that. Well, that's collecting data about something, but you have to be in physical contact with the object. In the general sense, then, if you have some kind of system that allows you to collect information about something, but you do not have to come into contact with that object, then you're doing remote sensing. In this sense, our eyeballs, our vision system that we you know, have biologically, is a remote sensing system that we depend on quite a bit. We're able to 
detect, determine all kinds of information about our environment without having to go and touch everything. Of course, what happens, and remote, uh, electromagnetic radiation is very important in all of remote sensing, but particularly what's happening with our eyeballs is we've got electromagnetic radiation coming in off the sun or out of these lights in this particular room. It hits different objects, and then depending on what color your uh, the, what the color of the object is, the light bounces off of that object and then bounces into your eyeball, reflects off of the object into your eyeball, and then depending on the wavelength that was reflected, we see different colors, we see different objects, and we're able to determine uh, information about uh, you know, the, uh, our environment through this way. So in that sense, uh, in this broadest sense, that is remote sensing. So any time that you're collecting information about something without touching it, you are doing remote sensing. Uh, even though, and then of course, satellite imagery is is part of that, and an important subspecialization of that, but only part of that. Um, this is, oh, I was going to say, this in general is an excellent way to collect data about lots of things, like satellite imagery, because you know it's very frequently you know, talked about. We live in the age of big data now. Uh, we got giant data sets. Well, one of the reasons that we collect, have such giant data sets is because of satellite imagery and the data that's collected that way. Uh, if you know what you're doing, and if you are studying something such as in the environment that can be detected, can be studied through uh, the reflection of electromagnetic radiation, uh, you can be just awash in data. You can have more data than you know what to do with very, very quickly. I mean, in GIS in general, uh, one of the questions that I'm very frequently asked is, where do I get the data? Where do I go to get data about different things? And admittedly, in some places, in some cases, depending on what you're studying, that can be difficult. But if you are studying something that can be detected by a satellite image, then you can very quickly have uh, uh, an extreme amount of data. I was trying to collect some information. I, I saw uh, one of those infographics about uh, the data that we collect as a society and where it does come from. Uh, and remote sensing systems in orbit around the planet are uh, one of them that generates just a, a huge amount of data. Actually, I think that the Large Hadron Collider is about the, the, the thing on the planet at the moment that's producing the most amount of data. You know, when they smash you know, electrons into each other, all the subatomic particles, the amount of data that's collected from one of those collisions is just you know, an astronomical amount of data from every one. Uh, but very far up there are uh, satellites that are constantly beaming data back down about the planet. I couldn't find the uh, infographic that I specifically remember seeing that from. Uh, but for instance, uh, NASA alone puts out four terabytes of data to the public every single day. So if you're looking for data, well, I mean, and a lot of that data comes from Earth observation uh, satellite systems. So uh, I think that's pretty current information, but they have that up on their website. They're making four terabytes available to the public a day. Um, one particular NASA mission, the Earth observing system data, uh, Earth observation systems data and information system, they say that since 2005, they've collected uh, three terabytes of data from that one mission, uh, three, excuse me, three petabytes of data from that mission alone. Uh, another mission they were talking about is bringing in one and a half terabytes of data a day, which is the equivalent of about half a million MP, MP3 uh, songs a day. So this is one of the areas that you don't, your problem is actually not a dearth of data. The problem is actually that when you get involved in remote sensing, you can have so much data that you have to use special, sophisticated methodologies just to cull through the amount of data that you're getting to find what's relevant to what you're trying to study. So I, I thought that was a, an interesting, interesting fact that, well, this is, this is one of the major ways we collect data on our planet.